At the beginning of 1944, as the date for Operation Overlord drew closer, it was clear that the Luftwaffe had not yet been defanged. The invasion plan depended heavily on the destruction of the Luftwaffe. Factories all across Germany continued to churn out thousands of warplanes destined to replace those downed by the Allies. Time was of the essence. The Allied commanders issued orders to the 8th Bomber Command for a week-long, all-out air offensive aimed at twin targets, the German aircraft industry and the Luftwaffe's remaining forces. This operation, later nicknamed Big Week, began in the final week of February. The 8th made their first contribution to the effort on the 20th. Their targets were several industrial complexes, ranging from Leipzig to Rostock, that had been identified as aircraft production centers. As they flew toward each target, they incited a strong defensive reaction from the Luftwaffe, which was exactly what the 8th's commanders had hoped for. The attrition of active German fighters was as important as stalling production of new ones. Quite a few Allied bombers fell in the effort as well. The next day, American flights struck the Messerschmitt 110 component plants at Brunswick, along with airfields at Hanover, Ockmer, and Hopton. Again, the German air forces mounted a savage defense, and the toll of planes destroyed was high. This running battle was quickly growing costly for both sides, but the Allies would not be swayed. The offensive continued on the 22nd, with strikes on industrial targets at Schweinfurt, Gotha, Bernburg, Oscherschleben, Aschersleben, Halberstadt, and Regensburg. After one day of rest, the unremitting 8th paid visits to plants at Kriesing, Hosen, and Steyr. On the final day of Big Week, they attacked industrial complexes at Stuttgart, Firth, and Augsburg, and paid a return visit to Regensburg as well. The German warplane industry suffered greatly as a result of these ceaseless bombing raids, but it became evident less than two weeks later during the first raid on Berlin that the Luftwaffe's ability to offer a strong defense had not been destroyed. Germany easily compensated for the drops in productivity, and the lost aircraft were quickly replaced. The real injury to the Luftwaffe from this effort turned out to be the loss of irreplaceable, experienced pilots. The airborne war of attrition continued without abatement until the invasion began by which time the Allies had established the complete air supremacy they desired. 